Well, I thought uh, 2022, here we go, brand new year, glad to have last year behind us. Went to turn on my car and it was dead. <laughs> Eli, I like that one. Uh, but the Lord again showed His grace as it uh, was then jumped and I drove here just fine. Uh, I have a gift for us this morning. Uh, we're going to interact with the living God ourselves in His scriptures. And we're going to reflect on how He's shown His grace this past year as we look forward to walking with Him in the new year. I love uh, that line, the Lord of hosts is with us. Uh, he's with us. Uh, you know, on a college campus, uh, here's uh, what happens uh, when they kind of first build it. Uh, they put the dorms up, they put the classrooms up, they, they build all these structures, right? And, and then uh, sometimes and often, uh, the, the owners, the builders uh, of the campus will kind of just sit back and they won't put the, the pathways in yet, uh, how to get from one classroom to another, or one dorm room to another. And, and what they'll wait for and watch is how uh, the students kind of tread repetitiously in the same piece of grass over and over. Uh, and, and then uh, eventually uh, pathways are worn through repetition. Uh, one time a college didn't do this, you know, and, and built these big paths from dormway to dormway. And then uh, the, the, the students tread just about 10 yards to the right of this one, one of the biggest paths in campus. Uh, so much so that it was worn uh, to dirt and mud. And, and finally they said, fine, we'll put a pathway there too, right next to about 10 yards next to the main pathway in campus. Uh, this is what happens to our souls through repetition, through rhythm, through liturgy. Uh, pathways are tread in them, in, in our mind, in our souls, um, in an indelible and irreplaceable way. Uh, uh, things become true to us, things become real to us, things sink into our minds, our hearts, our souls. When we tread and walk in the same places, in the same ways, over and over again. When we listen to the same news feed over and over again. When we scroll the same Facebook pages over and over again. Pathways are tread into our mind, into our soul. Through repetition, through liturgy. It's, it's kind of why we do the same sort of liturgy every Sunday, right? We're invited to worship the Lord by Him, but then we, we, we see, oh man, we, we have no right to, to worship this God. And then in liturgy and repetition, we, we sit before Him, we confess our sin, our shortcomings, our failings. But then we're reminded of His grace, and, and then in response, we sing these songs of joy and praise and repetition of His goodness. And, and sometimes we'll do a God revealed where we say, man, you are a good, gracious God to us. And, and then every week, you know, after singing songs of praise in a time of God revealed. Uh, we hear the scripture read. We say, Lord, transform our minds, our hearts by what is true in your word. And then we uh, hear the scriptures preached and we interact with uh, the word. And, and then we say, man, I want to live this out for you. I, I want to do the best I can. Uh, but, but we realize, gosh, we, we, we can't. And when, then we take communion and reminded of his just abundant grace that compels us into obedience. We sing of his praise one last time, and then we're sent into the world to live in worship in our benediction this kind of we live these rhythms this liturgy on sunday mornings we do this in our lives though too i you know i remember um i was listening to this one pastor over and over again preach and in the repetition uh, uh, pathways were being worn into my soul and, and he was saying good things but but it was the way he was saying it in condescension and and even some of the words he was using and I saw myself starting to speak like him and, and say things like him in a condescending way and I thought oh man repetition has worn a pathway into my soul I, I can't listen to him anymore and I stopped maybe your news feed is doing this to your mind your heart your soul it's wearing a pathway there it's transforming and changing you through liturgy and repetition. Maybe the people you're hanging out with are doing that, and, and it's, it's right in a pathway in their soul. What I want to do this morning is give us a gift. Uh, to say that 2022 uh, might be a time where we rhythm, we pattern our lives in silence and solitude which might lead to a deeper strength, resilience, as the Lord wears a pathway on our souls as He walks with us in whatever we're walking in. 
It's one of my favorite verses in the Scripture, Psalm 46, verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Be still. The, the Hebrew is kind of like, shut up. Stop talking. Sit with me, your God. Then we'll know, we'll see him exalted in our lives, in our county, in our country, in all the earth, all the world. Is in our stillness, we're reminded, I am not God, but he is, and he is with me. And then in that repetition, that liturgy of, of stillness and solitude, he might wear a pathway on our souls this year. Uh, Eugene Peterson's uh, become one of my favorite authors over the years, and in this biography written about him uh, called A Burning in My Bones, I like that. He's a pastor, he's a contemplative kind of guy, he's a guy who often lives this verse of stillness before the Lord, uh, before his death this past couple of years, and he says this, I want to be a pastor, I want to be a person who prays. I want to be reflective and responsive and relaxed in the presence of God so that I can be reflexive and responsive and relaxed in your presence. I can't do that on the run. It takes a lot of time. I want to be a pastor, a person who reads and studies. This culture in which we live squeezes all the God sense out of us. I want to be observant and informed enough to help this congregation understand what we're up against, the temptations of the devil to get us thinking we can be our own gods. This is subtle stuff. It demands detachment and perspective. I can't do this by just trying harder. <laughs> I want to be a pastor, a person who has time to be with you in leisurely, unhurried conversations so that I can understand and be a companion with you as you grow in Christ. Your doubts, your difficulties, your desires, your delights. I can't do that if I'm running scared. This rhythm, this repetition of silence and solitude, be still and know that He is God. Uh, might we be a people who build it into our annual rhythms? We'll practice some of it today together. But might it get into our daily rhythm as well this year? Uh, here's how I have done this, and, and it's led to tasting the Lord uh, in a more intimate way throughout these past couple years as this has become a discipline in my life. I have a morning rhythm and an evening rhythm. I, I don't hit it all the time, and that's why we've given you this journal here, right? A, a morning rhythm and an evening rhythm. If you've got the journal that we've gifted you on, on the way in, please grab it. Uh, in the morning, I go through this process of I commit my life, I submit my plans, and I accept His grace. Commit, submit, accept. Uh, most mornings, I'll sit either at the office or in my house, and the chaos kind of runs around us starting about 6 a.m., and, and I'll write there, Lord, today I commit my life to you, and I'll praise him a little bit. I'll write my prayer of, God, you are this amazing God who I want to live for. I commit my life to you. I, I submit my plans to you, and I write out some of the plans for the day. I, I submit them to you. you. You might change them, and, and I submit every bit of them to you. Do as you please. And, and Lord, I accept your grace preemptively. I accept your grace. Your grace for the strength to, to live out these plans for your purposes, and your grace when I will undoubtedly fall short in these plans often. I, I accept your grace. God, God, I commit my life to you. I, I submit my plans to you, and I accept your grace preemptively. And then at the end of the day, uh, really, end of any season. You can do this at the end of any task you lead out in work, uh, uh, any week, any day, or any year. At the end, I rejoice, I repent, and I receive. 
I rejoice. I look back and say, Lord, and we're going to kind of go into each one of these and practice them together out of the scriptures. But, but I rejoice. I say, Lord, you were with me, or you did this or that, or you're so gracious in that. I repent, Lord, I, I fell short in this, or I chose disobedience in this. And, and I receive. I, I look through the rhythms, the themes of that day, and I say, Lord, are you trying to tell me something? I, I receive from you. So at the close of a season or the close of a task you lead at work or the close of a day, I do these things. Over time, and I'll read these scriptures to us, it'll be a different pace of a sermon this morning. Over time, I have learned uh, that reading the scriptures is not just about learning something, but it's about knowing someone. Sitting in silence and solitude and repetition and rhythm and reading the scriptures and sitting with my Lord. It's not, a, it's not uh, maybe even primarily even about knowing something. It's about knowing someone, meeting him in the scriptures. Uh, the Psalms talk about this over and over again, taste and see, right? David says in Psalm 34, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces shall never be ashamed. And he goes on and then in verse 8 says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man or woman who takes refuge in him. Psalm 63 talks in a similar kind of way of tasting and seeing that the Lord is good. It's not just about knowing something, but knowing and being intimate with someone. Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul it thirsts for you. My flesh it faints for you. As in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I've looked upon you in the sanctuary. I've beheld your power and glory because your steadfast love is better than life. My lips will praise you. Tasting him. Seeing him. Enjoying him. In silence and solitude. Sitting with him in the scriptures. Psalm 96 will say, sing to the Lord. Right There's an overwhelming of praise to our God when we know him this kind of way. This can't happen in a hurried way. If you spent uh, 2021 looking at your circumstances more than the Lord in the Scriptures, you you won't have come out knowing Him this intimately. I think He's inviting us in this coming year to a depth of resiliency that we'd find in like a Psalm 1 kind of thing, a a tree planted by streams of living water where we sink our roots into a repetitious relationship with him in silence and solitude in his scriptures. So I'll give you that gift uh, this morning together with me. We'll approach our God. Uh, We'll use this rhythm of the evening rhythm as we look back on the past year together in the scriptures and reflection. Uh, So get out your journals, um, and and you can write these rhythms on on the front cover like I've done, uh, morning and evening, or you know, you might say, well, I don't know if I'm going to use this rhythm this year. And, and sure, tweak it uh, for yourself in a different sort of way. That's fine. Maybe you write it on the front page here. (laughs) The first rhythm in reflection after something has passed, in this case our year, 2021, as we head into 2022, the first rhythm is that of rejoice, rejoice. If you have your scriptures uh, with you this morning, I'd say please every Sunday bring the Bible with you. Uh, If you need to purchase one, go ahead and do that. The ESV Study Bible is a fantastic one. Uh, We can help you buy a really expensive, really nice Bible if you want, if you'll read it. (laughs) Bring it with you every Sunday this year. Uh, If you're at home uh, and if you're here, go ahead and 
uh, get a journal out to reflect on. Um, if you've got a calendar, my mom used to hang up one of those calendars on the wall. I, none of us do that anymore. But your Google calendar, or and even this is maybe the only time you'll hear me say this, get your Facebook feed ready from the past year if you want. Uh, get your photos ready. Maybe they're on your phone. We're going to use all these together this morning as we get into the Scriptures, meet our living God, and reflect on His presence with us this past year. First, in rejoicing. Psalm 107. Turn there with me if you have your Bible. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he's redeemed from trouble and gathered in the lands, from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south. Some wandered in desert wastes, finding no way to a city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their souls fainted. Man, can you relate within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and He delivered them from their distress. He led them by straight ways as they reached a city to dwell in. Let them thank the Lord for His steadfast love, for His wondrous works to the children of men. He satisfies the longing soul, the hungry soul He fills with good things. The Psalms are full of this kind of rejoice and reflection. Uh, some psalms will talk about God as a creating God. He made everything. And then in the same psalm, uh, he'll get in the nooks and crannies and details of the lives of the Israelites. And they'll say, you were with us then. You did this then. Wow, God, you're amazing. You're beyond anyone we could have expected. You give more than we deserve. Joshua chapter 4 is one of my favorite chapters in the scriptures, and we return to it every year as a family. Uh, Joshua chapter 4 is the story of the Israelites uh, crossing into, uh, crossing the Jordan uh, into uh, Jerusalem and uh, Jericho, actually. And what happens is they take the Ark of the Covenant, the presence of God, uh, across a raging river, the Jordan, and, and the Lord stops the river, and then everyone walks on dry land uh, across it on stones. And the Lord says to Joshua in chapter 4, take 12 stones from here, the midst of the Jordan, from every place where the priest's feet stood firmly, and bring them with you, and lay them down in a place where you lodge tonight. Make a pile of stones of God's goodness, of remembrance, and and, what the, and when your children ask you in a time to come, verse 6, what do these stones mean to you? <laughs> then you'll teach them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord when it passed over the Jordan, and the waters of the Jordan were cut off. So these stones shall be to the people of Israel a memorial forever. Stack up these stones as you look back at the events of this past year and you see God's goodness, His presence, His abundant giving, His sustaining power. You just stack them up and, and remember what the Lord has done. And, and every once in a while, the Lord will just do something massive in our lives. And we'll get a stone from that place. This one's uh, our wedding. <laughs> uh, Court and I got married on July 26th of 2003. I'm glad I got the date right there. And so we got this stone from that church. Uh, the church was struck by lightning that year and burned to the ground. I don't know what that means. <laughs> That's bad. But we got a stone. And uh, once a year in New Year's, so we'll gather around the table with our kids. We'll read Joshua chapter 4, and we'll take the different stones from years past. And this one says the Seventh-day Adventist uh, church on an SDA. That, that's this building we worship in. And we'll tell stories of, oh man, God has provided a stable place to worship and serve Him here in Silver Spring for years. Our God is so good. COVID, we're in our second year of COVID. Uh, COVID year one got a stone. <laughs> Lord, you sustained us in a crazy time when all the kids came home. It was chaos. You gave us some sweet moments in there. You, you gave us different provision from the government, even extra money. We were so shocked. And Lord, you showed up in so many different ways. We'll tell the story. In high times and in low times, you know, Psalm 
107 was full of just, wow, God's amazing grace in different moments, but there are low times, too, when the Lord shows up. Psalm 77, in reflection, the psalmist looks back. Psalm 77, he says, oh, I cry aloud to you, God, aloud to God, and you'll hear me. In the day of my trouble, I seek the Lord. In the night, my hand is stretched out without wearying. My soul refuses to be comforted. And I remember, God, I moan. I meditate, but my spirit faints. You hold my eyelids open, so I'm troubled, and I cannot speak. I consider the days of old, the years long ago. Will the Lord spurn me forever, and things never be favorable again? But then he ends the psalm with this phrase. He says, your way was through the sea, your path through the great waters, yet your footprints were unseen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. We didn't see you. We didn't understand what you were doing. Man, but we knew you were there. Because we know you're a faithful, good God, in the highs and in the lows. Psalm 111, verse 4, kind of summarizes what the psalmist does when he remembers and rejoices over and over again. Psalm 11, verse 4 says it this way. He's caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. It's just what the psalmist does when he remembers and rejoices. He takes the events, all the things that the Lord has done or not done, and and he looks through them like a window into the character of his God. Oh, your works are wondrous, and in them I see your gracious and merciful character. That's what I want us to do for a minute here. Look back over your year, the events, the relationships. If you need to, what I often do, and I've provided my personal reflection guide in the back as a guide for you this week. I do it the first week of January. Provide another reflection guide as well that we'll be doing as a church. If you need to, kind of go to your calendar. I go to my Google calendar here, and I just kind of go week by week, and I start looking through the events. So go ahead, you can get, you get your phone out, um, or maybe you, you think your pictures might be a little more helpful to remember what occurred this past year. Go to your pictures, start back in January, start kind of slowly scrolling through them, or your calendar, and start scrolling through it. I'm going to give us about 10 minutes to do this. I want us to interact with the living God in His scriptures and in remembering of what He's done, where He's been this past year with you. As you're scrolling, I'll kind of state different reminders, different places to look in your past where you might see him. Jot him down in your journal as you begin rejoicing over his presence with you. Think about the amazing stones of events that occurred, a vacation you went on or a moment with your family that he provided. Think about some of the lows where his sustaining grace was present, or where he may have been withholding more suffering than you knew was behind his gracious hand as he withheld it. There's redeeming grace how he turned one event that looked awful for good. What were some major highs or some major lows? you're scrolling your own Facebook feed, stay on your own Facebook feed through the year. (laughs) What emotion hit you with that event as you remembered it just now?
How did he show himself in your singleness or in your marriage? How did he provide for you this past year? This is only a taste of reflection towards rejoicing, but now talk with him directly about these things. Talk to him about who he is. Praise him for who he is. Thank him for his presence with you, his sustaining power, his mercy, his grace, his might. Let the events be a window into the very character of your God and talk with him now and praise him and rejoice over who he is and how he's shown himself. Father, I saw appointments with different possible staff members and interviews with different possible staff members. And God, I remember thinking, how will you provide for your church the well? Who will you bring? How how can you fill these gaps? And Father, I praise you and thank you. You are a mighty provider through Thule, through Brandon, through Chad and Willis and Ronald. God, uh, we, we lost our parking lot this past year, and I remember thinking, Lord, how will you provide a, a parking lot, and, and how will you uh, give a stable space, and you brought in tons of funds through your church to prepare us for the right space and the right time, and I trust you, you're a good, gracious, generous God. And then weeks ago, you brought the parking lot back to give us some breathing room. God, you met our family in some highs and lows this past year. You gave us some amazing trips and time together. I give you praise and thanks. God, you are a good God. You were a good God. You are a good God, and you will be a good God. I give you praise and thanks for who you are and will be. It's in Christ's name. Amen. The next rhythm in reflection is that of repentance. And we look back and rejoice over the past year of God's presence, God's provision, His mercy, His grace, His generosity. But but in contrast, we also see kind of uh, the brokenness and the sinfulness of our own lives and the brokenness and the sinfulness of our world as well. Psalm 51 is this moment where the psalmist was reflecting on his own sin of adultery and murder, and, and he comes to God for grace that he might lay his sin specifically before the Lord, that he might embrace the Lord's grace and turn from his sin to new obedience. 
Psalm 51 says this, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. If we try to hide our sin from our God or from ourselves uh, from this past day or this past year, it will live like a mold within our lives. It will uh, uh, eat away at the foundations of our relationship with our God and our relationship with others. But the psalmist uh, leads us in reflection as he looks at his sin from the past. and He says, Lord, here it is. Would you pour your abundant mercy and grace on me? I'm being honest with you. I, I want to be honest with you and honest with others. And, and I want to turn from my sin by the power of your grace and mercy. Let's do that as we reflect on this past year. For the things done and left undone, for the things we've said or left unsaid. And, and then let's also not just uh, stay at the surface of our actions or inactions, but let's get into the motives and, and what that says about our relationship with God and our views of ourselves. So think back over this past year. Where'd you fall short? Where'd the brokenness of this world strike you? Where'd your own sin get into the scene? I think over this past year in your workplace, your excellence of work or your apathy and half-heartedness at work. You think of your home and relationships in your house with your, your, your wife or your roommates and, and your kids. Think about your life with the Lord. What marked it? Where, where do you need to Lay something before him in honesty and transparency. Think back over this past year. What do you need to lay before your Lord? Talk to him now specifically about these things. A relationship that you ought to have run towards, that you ran away from or did not reconcile. An apathy towards him or others. Thoughts in your mind or things you've looked at, the way you've treated your body or the way you've treated others, lay it before him now and be embraced by his grace. Father, I have not been the father that I ought to be or want to be. I've not been the husband that I ought to be or want to be. I've not been the pastor that I ought to be or want to be. God, thank you for your mercy and your grace. Thank you that my relationship with you is not based on my performance, but on the performance and work of your son in my place. 
Thank you that the gifts you've given me, you will cultivate for your purposes and your time. And God, make me a faithful servant to you in my home and in my church. God, make us faithful servants to you in our workplaces, in our families, in our neighborhoods. God, transform us by your grace and your embrace. You've given us grace for our shortcomings this past year. Would you give us grace for obedience and to run to you in our shortcomings this coming year? God, you are abundantly merciful. We're so grateful that you ran towards each of us. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. The last and final rhythm is that of receive. We've rejoiced over who our God is. We have repented over who we are. Now we receive. What might the Lord have for us as we turn into this new season, whether it be the next day, the next week, or in this case, the next year? Psalm 19 uh, talks about these areas where uh, the Lord kind of reveals Himself to us. Uh, In Psalm 19, we read in verses 1 and 2, The heavens declare the glory of God. The sky proclaims His handiwork. Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. We see and know our God. He reveals Himself that we might receive from Him in creation. We say, man, you are a great, mighty God. I see it in these mountains. In the Scriptures, then, He also reveals us, verse 7 of Psalm 19, the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. We won't know our God if we don't know Him in the Scriptures. We won't. He says, receive from me uh, in the circumstances of your life. Would you see me there in the relationships in the church? Would you hear from me there uh, through preaching, through leadership, uh, through, uh, through all these areas, uh, through prayer and listening? But, but primarily, would we meet and receive from him in the scriptures now in this year? The psalmist says uh, in Psalm 5, verse 3, in the morning I lay my request before you, and I wait in eager expectation. I love it. (laughs) Since I come and talk, I I am in a vibrant living relationship with you in the morning, and then I wait to see how you answer through the day. Spend some time in reflecting. Uh, What has the Lord kind of themed for you this past year in the Scriptures or in your times of prayer and listening or through circumstances, as you look back, what, what might you need to receive from Him as something that is true? Uh, annually, I'll do this kind of as a word, one word kind of thing, and, and, and I'll write, you know, th- mine this year was, be with and be bold. I know it's more than one word, but it's one phrase. Be with Him and then be bold. <laughs> be with the people around me. Be fully present, then be bold and how I uh, uh, respond to them in humility and grace. Be with my God and be bold in obedience. What theme is he stirring for you? In past years for me, it's been, you can get a new job, but you can't get a new family. Do less better has been one in the past. What is it for you that you need to receive from the Lord? Look back a bit over your year. And like I said, we're just getting a taste of this this morning. Might we do it more fully in our days and weeks in this coming week as we reflect on our year? What are you hearing from the Lord in a scripture and prayer through circumstances or people?
But every theme, everything we kind of receive from him kind of circle around this one main idea, this kind of Paul gives it voice in Philippians chapter 3, verse 10 and 11. Let it somehow be connected to this one main desire. I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection, participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow to attain to the resurrection from the dead. In everything I receive from you, in the way you've been with me, and I rejoice this past year, in my shortcomings, and, and now as I look forward to this new year, uh, Lord, one thing I want, one thing I know is I want to know your son more and more. I want to know how majestic and obedient and good he is and and mighty is and i want to know the the depth of his sacrifice to make me his son and make you his daughter i want to know all about him and live like him in my life i want to know him so intimately that whatever 2022 brings it i just want to know him more deeply and walk with him more intimately our father's made this possible (laughs) because his son was broken for our sin. His blood was spilled, and then he resurrected to newness of life that we would have a living and vibrant relationship with him in the highs and in the lows this past year and this year to come. And you and I, we can't rush a relationship. We can't. So might we make this coming year a year where we rhythm and pattern and repetition A year where we sit in silence and solitude with him in the scriptures and get to know him deeply. Experience a new resilience and a deeper joy, the knowledge of our Savior in 2022. Let's take and eat together and remember who our God is and what he's done and how that transforms everything about the past year and the year to come. Let's take and eat together.